Almost every college in Kentucky has a football program, but Northern Kentucky University does not, so today I've decided to start one because they need to have success in sports other than basketball. They will be competing in an online NCAA football league, the RFL, which has 32 different colleges at its highest tier, and our goal is to make the 12-team playoffs this year. The 5-5 wide receiver from my most popular series is a part of this team, and I brought over many channel favorites such as Dylan Hoffman and Jalen Miller. We are stuck in a pretty tough conference though, and our in-state rivals Kentucky are coming off of a national championship, so there is no telling how this first season will go. Additionally, two of our starters are suspended to start the year, as running back Nathan Ballard's GPA is a 2.1, so he will be missing the first two games, and our best wide receiver Drake Taylor is suspended for one because he got caught taking some extra cash. I had to pay him illegally to get him to come here, and now we're ready to begin the 10-game regular season at the bounce house. The last thing I'll mention is I am our starting quarterback, coming in at an enormous 5 feet and 8 inches, and even though I was given a very generous 86 overall, I was far from perfect. We started the year ranked 6, which is only because of where I finished with Alabama, and after giving up 83 points in the RFL semifinals, my main focus this season had to be getting good at defense. After locking up and getting the ball back, this happened. Oh boy, Greg Ridgway is off to the races! As exciting as that was, the game crashed right after, so we had to reset everything back to where it was, and he would follow that up with the tying touchdown. Fortunately for us, Greg Ridgway filled in very well while starting halfback Nathan Ballard was suspended, but that didn't stop me from making atrocious reads that could ruin our chances of winning. Terrible clock management by me. And that was the worst part as I gave him the ball back with less than a minute left in the half and running back Isaiah Bowser took advantage of it. We went from having the chance to go up by 14 to being tied at 14 and the only thing keeping us in it was our online opponent deciding to drop 20 yards back in the pocket. I tried my hardest to get the 5-5 wide receiver Jake Newman a touchdown but he couldn't hold on to anything and that forced us to go for it on 4th and 7. Wide open, wide open, hold on to it, let's go. Tom Reed. It was a relief that we picked it up, but the game was still far from over, and nearing the fourth quarter, it was only a one possession one until this happened. Let's start with a run. Up the middle, Greg Ridgway gets out! Greg Ridgway is gonna go all the way. What a huge run from him. He is having an outstanding game. And so was Jalen Miller, the two-way player from my last Road to Glory series who came up big when we needed him. But of course, after having a three and out, UFC went down the field and scored on the flukiest play. So to run out the rest of the clock, I just let backup halfback Greg Ridgway go to work as he got in again. And there were plenty of moments of doubt, but your Northern Kentucky Norse held on. I was not expecting to win the first game at the bounce house. That's for sure, but Greg Ridgway has been a dog. And he finished with a remarkable stat line. Now we were going to get wide receiver Drake Taylor back from suspension, but our next game was against the former national champion, so I was expecting it to go bad for us. He tried to bomb me from the jump. And that's an interception. We got him to throw an interception on the first play. And that would have been the ideal start, but it was really blurry. As a result, I got really frazzled playing on a potato of a host. And by the time it was fixed, it was halftime where we were going to be down by four. We still had a chance to take the lead though until our receivers collided, causing this interception. And that was extremely frustrating because it led to him going up by 11. What I learned from this game was our players were going to struggle against the best teams. But I also couldn't just sit back and let our rivals embarrass us in our home opener. After scoring a touchdown, getting Getting a stop and scoring another one, we found ourselves right back in it, but he got into the end zone again, and even though I kept trying to keep up, I couldn't do so as the horrific turnovers were going to cost us the game. Even with the undesired result, this was a very important matchup to our season, because I realized that if we could keep it this close with the reigning national champion, then we could beat anybody in the RFL, and that was the mentality that we had to have. Nathan Ballard ended up getting his GPA up to a 2.5, so he was finally starting for us, and we couldn't have asked for a better beginning to this game. Linebacker PJ Blue got his second pick of the year, and South Dakota State looked to be in a lot of trouble. Put me in the hole, coach. Let me get in there. Oh, the play action worked. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. And I honestly felt bad for the Jackrabbits user because we put him in a box. The good news was this made me feel like we could make the playoffs, and normally I'd follow that up with bad news, but everything was going our way. I clicked on, and I did not make the play I needed to. That's a pick. That is a pick. I'm not quite sure why he threw it, but I'll take it. And Nathan Ballard coming back from suspension was huge for us, not because he was smart, but because he was an athletic freak. The South Dakota State user was trying everything, but even on fourth and two, he clearly had no luck, and 92 speed Nathan Ballard. Ballard just continued to annihilate his defense, proving why he was always going to be starting over Greg Ridgway. You know what's crazy? He is not aware of the clock. He didn't... <laughs> Oh, it's 35 to 0. And in the end, we ended up getting our second win of the year very easily. Nathan Ballard went for 241 yards, 7 touchdowns, and I was ready going into Arizona. Since running had been working so well, I kept doing it and... We're starting it off with Nathan Ballard. 
He's going to do a cutback juke, and he might get to the outside here. Is he fast enough? Look at this move! And he might not have been able to go all the way to the house, but he put us in a great position, and then backup running back Greg Ridgway finished off the job. We're currently ranked 8th in the country, and I feel like we're a playoff team as long as the defense keeps holding it down, because with our two-headed monster at halfback, we should be able to score a ton. After going up by 14 early, we had no pressure on us, and it showed. That's an interception. I usered it all day. Trayvon Faulkner, the basketball player, comes down with it. That's a great play. And then Nathan Baller did what he does best, scoring a touchdown on the Wildcats. Going back through this footage, I'm honestly in disbelief at how dominant he looked in the first few games for us. And with two minutes left in the first half, the Arizona user finally got into the back of the end zone. So I attempted to respond back to end the quarter. I have a touchdown though. If he holds on to it, Lane Houghton Jr. drops the ball. And since he did, we had to settle for three with destroying. Fortunately though, the game was clearly already over. I'm usering all that. He's thrown it up one-on-one. -on -one. Jalen Miller comes down with it. And after this touchdown, you all are going to get a nice jump cut to the end. We ended up winning 55-7, to and somehow Nathan Ballard had an even better stat line than last week. This put us as a mid-table team in our conference, but the season is about to get hard again with our next matchup. I beat the Oregon user in the RFL playoffs last year, but this time I was using NKU, not Alabama, and since he was undefeated, I was very surprised we got onto the board first. Defensively, though, we were doing well, and then we forced a fourth and inches where this happened. I'm I'm ready for it. And he's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. And that was a huge stop that we capitalized on as I found Nathan Ballard on third and long, which turned into six. From there, it continued to get worse as well. Slants open. That's not though. That's an interception. I didn't even want to click on Kai Knox. He throws it straight to us. The zone threw him off and we're going to go down about the 23. It was clear that my new defense was working, but I might blow the game since I got my controls mixed up. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I hit the PlayStation X. You've got to be kidding me. I had a drag underneath. This completely changed everything as it was now just a one possession one. This is ridiculous. And I was frustrated, but I kept calm and ended the half the right way. I still had full control of the game, so all I had to do was run it. And after extending our lead to 21, I felt really comfortable. Somehow we had dominated against a top five team, and with three minutes left on fourth and one, we got the final stop that we needed. Even though we were a new school, it felt like we could be championship contenders, and I ended up winning player of the game with myself. That result put us atop our conference standings, but we didn't move up in the polls at all as we stayed ranked eighth. To be fair, up to this point, the only quality win on our schedule was against Oregon, and we were now taking on Mississippi State, but they were two and two, so winning this one wouldn't exactly make us seem like contenders to the rest of the league. If we want to stay in the playoff race, though, we can't afford to lose. And Jake Newman is getting open. He's breaking a tackle. Jake Newman gets into the end zone. That's a great start. The 5-5 wide receiver wasn't the only former Road to Glory player doing well either as Jalen Miller came away with an easy interception here. And since this was our first year with a football program, Northern Kentucky was shocking the college football world as nobody expected us to be this dominant. I'll take that all day. I was on that all day. Trayvon Faulkner with the pick six. That's an amazing lurk. Oh my gosh. My defense had improved so much from the last RFL season, which is is massive because that's one of the main reasons our playoff run ended in the semifinals. And that's another interception. I mean, we have confused him so much on defense right now that I have no words to, like, I don't think he knows what's going on. I've switched up my defense. There's zones everywhere. And even though we couldn't hold him to zero forever, it felt like enough damage had already been done. We scored 28 points in just one quarter. And up until today, we hadn't seen the 5-5 wide receiver, Jake Newman, get involved, but that was changing quickly. If it wasn't already bad enough for my opponent, this happened next and I just felt terrible. That is the unluckiest drop I've ever seen. And of course, that led to us extending our lead to even more points. This was the game that really put us on the map as I was facing off against the RFL commissioner and through just one half of football, we put up 49, which meant we were on pace to score 100. However, instead of shooting for that, most of the second half was just me running the clock out and we ended up winning 63 to seven, which was great for point differential. That's the tiebreaker for making the conference championship, but because of how well we had been playing recently, we might be able to make it without needing a tiebreaker, which would be amazing. Our next matchup was against USC, who was undefeated in conference play, and it was a rare occurrence, but MMG had to come out to punt it. I wasn't quite sure how we would fare against a much higher overall team, but Caleb Williams wasn't exactly playing well. That's not open. 
That's an interception. Jalen Miller ran the route for him. We will take that all day. The hardest part was moving the ball as we got stuck on multiple fourth downs, but then we got super lucky as Lean Houghton Jr. broke the press as cleanly as possible. I knew that if we were going to continue to get stops on the Trojans, we would have to force them into mistakes, and that's exactly what we did. Pick it. Yeah, pick it. We had a zone there. And defensively, all was fine, but on the other side of the ball, not so much as we were forced to settle for three because I missed a simple throw. That obviously wasn't the ideal finish to that drive, but we got the ball back just a few plays later as NKU basketball player Sam Vinson did this. And despite only having 67 total yards of offense, we were going to have a 17 point lead. I honestly couldn't believe how much he was struggling with one of the best offenses in the game. And you might be wondering how it could possibly all go wrong from here, but I got way too comfortable and complacent. With about 15 seconds left in the half, he was able to get into the red zone for the first time today. And this is where I began to get mentally frustrated. I'm right there. I'm right there. Are you kidding me? He got the ball to start the second second half so it was actually far from being over and my player's low awareness was really starting to show against the Trojans. All of a sudden it was a three point game as Jordan Addison took this in and this was proving to be a real test where we could show how good we were. A loss would be detrimental but a win would elevate us even more and when we needed to find the end zone on third and goal I made a terrible read. Settling for three meant he could go up with a touchdown but fortunately we got lucky with his right guard missing his assignment so he was forced to punt it. Our starting strong safety was back to return. Turn it. And we're going to cut back with Kynox, and Kynox is going to get out of there. Kynox, come on, come on. Inside the 15. Beautiful, beautiful return. I think we get in here. We're going with the halfback toss. Look at Nathan Ballard go. He's faster. He's faster. He is faster. It was a quick turnaround, but it felt like we were getting control of the game again. And when right end Mitch White got an interception, I knew we were going to be okay. USC had done one of the best jobs in shutting down our offense, but even with players like Caleb Williams, the Trojans user couldn't move the ball. This result was our sixth win of the season, and we were tied for first place in the WAC with Georgia. Our matchup against them was coming very soon, but first, we had to play the Baylor Bears at home and it is going to be in a blizzard. Luckily for us, they're one and six, so we should be the clear favorites and it seemed to be that way as we scored first. Looking back on the season, it had been almost five to six weeks since we had a closely competitive game and I don't know how we keep dominating. All right, let's see what Kai Knox can do on this return. I'm going to do a little back juke here to see if he can get around to this side and if we can get a block or two, maybe he can go here. He's clicking on that really messed with his player movement and right here, we're going to get into the end zone. At this point, I thought another one was already in the books, but I learned that wasn't the case fast. After dropping that pick there, I aggressively sent the heat on fourth and one, but it didn't work as he was able to convert it along with picking up an extra 30 yards. That would lead him scoring and getting it back within seven. So now it was our turn to score and not only would Lee and Houghton Jr. do that, but he laid out Jake Newman as well, who gave him a high five like nothing happened. Our fans were enjoying this show in the snow and I think our defense was fun to watch as we boxed everybody up. Using 6-4 and NKU basketball player Trayvon Faulkner, I could get over to any ball and the ending to the first half was pretty chaotic for both teams. We were forced to punt it back to Baylor, but within seconds, the football was back on the ground and I wished we recovered it, but it didn't really matter because he gave it right back to us by throwing it to Jalen Miller. That would give us just enough time to move the ball down the field and get into field goal range for destroying, who walked out and drilled this 53-yarder like it was nothing. Since we were up by 17 now with the ball, you'd think that this one would be over, but the weather said otherwise. The snow caused Drake Taylor to slip on his route, which led to them stopping us and scoring a touchdown right after. The game was back within reach for the Bears, but then this happened on the kickoff. Kai Knox getting out here. Kai Knox getting out here. This is his second return of the game if he pulls this off fully. I'm going to have to swerve. Good block from Lean Houghton Jr. I don't think he has the stamina for it, but he's still going to make it into the end zone. And that put us back up by 17, but that only made the Baylor user play even better. I don't know how he was one in six because he did a great job of staying in it, but in the end, getting multiple defensive stops would be hard to come by. And then I pulled off what I'm calling as the play of the season. I mean, we ran that for him. We're going to pitch it here. Oh, good pitch. Good pitch. Good spin move. Kai Knox gets out. Kai Knox gets into the end zone. What a play. What a play. <laughs> that ending was the best way possible to get our seventh win in the RFL. And obviously, Kai Knox won player of the game. Going into our ninth matchup of the year, we had to play Georgia. And they're the last team that's undefeated in our conference besides us. On his first drive, we honestly should have gotten a stop multiple times. But instead, he got away with taking three. And on the other side of the ball, I was back in the pocket making atrocious throws. Because 
because of that, I had no choice but to attempt this on third and long. I'm gonna click on and make a play with Newman, and Newman is so tiny he could not get around Bullard. That was a bad decision. He is going to take that back to the 40. It was a rough start, and then after missing this sack, he was able to get the throw off, scoring a touchdown on us immediately, and due to that, we had to respond back. Get a good run with Nathan Ballard, bounce it to the outside. He's gonna miss that tackle. That's why I ran it like that, and he is going to get down to the 30. The rushing attack seemed to be going better than passing, but we still had to get defensive stops, and I'm not sure what Stetson Bennett saw right here, but it was not open. That got us the ball back, and once again, running it in was key, as all of a sudden, we erased his two-possession lead. It wouldn't last, though, as not even a minute later, this broken play went to the house. And my goal was to end the half with a field goal, but you can imagine that didn't go well, and truthfully, I was just lucky that I was able to make a tackle here. I wasn't happy with how it was going, but after reviewing some film during halftime, I was able to find some holes in his defense that we could exploit. And on the halfback wheel route, Nathan Ballard was able to free himself for a wide open score. Then we got him to a fourth and six where he decided to go for it. Corner route is in a box. He tried to bomb us and that's an interception all day. I wish we would have just swatted it and that might have gotten us better field positioning, but it wouldn't change anything. That's going to bomb this coverage every time if my quarterback doesn't suck. We had him. We had him. And I just underthrew it. That's the second time I have sold. You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. I wasn't taking it very well as I had just blown our little lead. And at this point in the year, it was safe to say that we were a playoff lock, but I wanted a first round buy. The wheel route to Nathan Ballard got us into the end zone for the second time today. And now the pressure was on him to score as we got him to a third and 16 where he did this. That's an interception. That's an interception with Trayvon. We locked up on defense. Huge stop boys. And it was, but but it still wasn't over as after I drained a lot of clock, I got stuck on a fourth and one. College quarterback Steven Krajewski advised me to take three, so that's what I did, and it put the game in the hands of my defense where Jalen Miller did what he does best, locking up and getting yet another pick, so we improved to eight and one with yet another massive win. There were only a few teams around the country that were still better than us, and it was time for our final game of the regular season. Jacksonville State was playing for a playoff spot, so I was expecting it to be a difficult game, and this is where I made my first mistake. During the kickoff, ended up being the wrong time to make sure I was properly hydrated. Okay, I cannot have a sip of water because he's going to get a kick return. I have one sip of water and he gets a kick return. I'm not doing that again. After that silly mistake, Dylan Ballard helped us respond back with a touchdown of his own. And if I'm being completely honest, he should have scored on this play, but his quarterback simply didn't have the arm to make the throw. It seemed to be a rare occurrence, but I found Dylan Hoffman for six here. And after getting him to a fourth and four, he missed a wide open touchdown, then threw it to somebody who was locked up. So we got to stop. I thought I was going to end the half with a 17 point lead, but with 10 seconds remaining, he decided to lob up a prayer and I have no idea how he was able to come down with this catch. His playoff hopes weren't quite over yet because he got ball to start the third quarter and he had a chance to get it within seven, but instead he did this. Let's go. We intercepted that. Beautiful deflection. Kai Knox is coming out of there. Oh wow. He was fast. Out of frustration, Jacksonville State continued to send blitzes our way and tight end Dylan Hoffman was definitely having his best game yet. It seemed like it was pretty much over for our opponent is even when he scored we would just do the same and to end the third quarter this interception would be what officially sealed his fate. I was not expecting this going into the year but we were sitting at 9-1 and one, and our next game would be the WAC Conference Championship. Whoever won this one would most likely get a first round bye in the 12 team playoff and Georgia scored first but that wouldn't be the end of the world as I was very quick to respond back finding Lee and Houghton Jr. over the top of his defense. From the jump I wasn't having any luck getting stops on him and besides that one deep pass I was struggling. I don't have anything. I have nothing. I still threw it anyway. I still threw it anyway, just hoping we could potentially get the throw off. But yeah, we are in trouble. He literally had a perfect opportunity to go up by two possessions, but he couldn't capitalize on it. And yet I was still failing to do anything. That put us on a fourth and inches where I decided to go for it. And I couldn't believe MMG actually made the throw finding cornerback Jamari Brown, but it allowed us to end the first half, tying it up at 14. And we were getting the ball as well. The Georgia user was clearly shooting for revenge against us after we beat him a couple of weeks ago, but he didn't remember about the halfback wheel route that did damage to him, allowing us to finally take a lead, and that meant all of the pressure was on 12th year senior quarterback Stetson Bennett. He didn't throw that ball. He shouldn't. He should not have done that. Knox is going to break a tackle. Come on, Knox. Get out. Knox, come on. Come on. 
Swerve the lineman. Swerve the lineman. Oh my goodness. Kai knocks our safety. It makes the play of the game. And I was hoping that would seal it for us, but there was still too much time left as he scored almost immediately. In fact, there was still an entire quarter in the conference championship, and I was trying to run it out until this happened. Look at these blocks. There's the counter. There's the juke from Nathan Ballard getting into the end zone. With four minutes remaining, the 14-point lead on the Bulldogs made me feel a lot safer. But you have to remember, he's still using a team that is much better, which leads Leads to stuff like this happening, which made my user play feel like the best thing in the world. Oh, I got him. I got him. Look at that lurk. Watch this. Oh, shoot. Lateral back. Come on. Give me that all day. Trayvon Faulkner takes that to the house. That was my best user play of this whole dynasty. And this result should lock us in for our first round bye in the playoffs. For winning that game, the RFL also sent me out a conference championship trophy for NKU. And if my camera would ever focus on it, you'd see it has the score and our conference on it. Now it's time to get into the playoffs where we got put in as a three seed. And after the first round games, this is what the bracket looked like. I had to play the UCLA user who I barely beat with Bama in last year's playoffs. And I was not looking forward to this, especially since my team was worse than the one I had last season, but Nathan Ballard got us off to a great start as he went for a 65-yard run. He put the team on his back for our entire first drive, and I was surprised we were able to hold DTR, but he had an inaccurate throw, so we got an early defensive stop. He could have pinned us back inside the 10, but instead he went with a fake, and I'm not sure why he thought it was a good idea to try a 50-yard throw with his punter. One key thing I noticed very early on was that he was trying to press Lean Houghton Jr. with no help over the top but that obviously wasn't going to work and we were doing so well at the start which made these bailouts very frustrating. The game didn't let me click on to get the interception and on the next play he toasted our defense to get it back within just a possession and I hated the fact that he was sticking around because he is a very good player but as long as we continue to lock up this one could be over before halftime. I mean we were going up by 17 already but then he got the lucky break that he needed. Up to this point I had controlled the entire game and he was struggling to move the ball on me but with a kick return for a touchdown, he was able to get seven without beating my defense, and I let him get in there at the end to make sure I got to end the half with the ball, which ended up being an amazing decision leading to this score. It was a little too quick as he was able to get in field goal range, and the only player I really struggled to stop was DTR, but every so often he would make some costly mistakes. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Hit him. There we go. There's the fumble. Pick it. Yes, yes, yes. As you can tell, I was extremely excited and my excitement just continued to grow after Drake Taylor made a grown man's play, putting us up by 21 points on the Bruins, but for some reason he just wouldn't go away as he fought to stay alive in the playoffs. And he was even going for two point conversions. The momentum had clearly shifted and for some reason I threw a 50-50 ball to the 5-5 wide receiver, which he obviously was never going to be able to get in front of. It all happened so fast and we were collapsing and in front of our home crowd, but thankfully, I threw a laser in response to his touchdowns, but what followed that was two of the most frustrating plays in the entire game. On fourth and goal, I read him like a book, but I didn't get a pick animation, and that allowed him to challenge it, and even though it wasn't a catch on the field, and his foot was clearly out of bounds, the call was reversed, and he was back within a possession, so Nathan Ballard had to come out doing what he does best, breaking free for a touchdown, and you'd think that with this 13-point lead that we would be okay, but yet on another fourth down, we would give up an easy first, and UCLA was back within just six on us. All I had to do was run out the clock on him though, and on third and two with the game on the line, Dylan Hoffman came up with the big catch. We took down UCLA once again, and our semifinal opponent was going to be Penn State. They had just upset undefeated Michigan, so I came out sending heat, and it worked on the defensive side of the ball, but I was also making clueless turnovers to counteract it. There were clearly a lot of semifinal nerves, and he wasn't done getting them out. He went with the pass out of his own right there. Perfect. We went half man, half zone on that play. Half man, half zone. We got him a little confused. And to begin the second quarter, I found Dylan Hoffman wide open over the top for the opening score, which was great, but not as great as this. Pick it, pick it, pick it. I read it. I read it perfectly. Let's go, Boner. Come on, Boner. Swerve Drew Aller. Oh, he caught us. He caught us. And even though he did, it wouldn't hold me back from getting into the end zone with our tight end again. However, I read my Twitch chat for one moment, and that's when he blocked my kick. So all I could do was hope that in the end, that wouldn't come back to bite us. He did finally score with Nick Singleton as he went full beast mode, and with time running out in the first half, I wanted to have the last possession, but perhaps I was too passive as I had passed on a touchdown earlier on, and I had to settle for three with destroying instead. Obviously that wasn't ideal, and he began the third quarter with a sack, so the pressure of crumbling was officially on. I'm expecting the quarterback sneak, and yeah, there's the run. Are you serious right now? Nick Singleton 
is so good and he just broke off that tackle like it was nothing fortunately though one specific player was having a career game come on get us a block come on hoffman get out of there thank you thank you hoffman please swerve inside there's a lot of lag going on right now i don't think we're going to get into the end zone but even though we didn't there just a couple of plays later tom reed finished the job despite our early efforts to lock up his offense he was starting to figure out my defense and that wasn't good news for us with so much time left but once again with the ball in my hands i took care of business we'll take the curl all day jake newman come on jake get out of there jake he is so quick he only has like 90 speed but his little 5-5 five five is gonna break his way into the end zone let's go his player has like three or are you serious again they just blocked it for the second time if he picks this up you've got to be joking me where on earth did lean houghton jr come from come on please catch him no way oh my gosh How I was so frustrated because with just a quarter left, he could take the lead on this drive, but thank goodness he didn't as my defense put the clamps on when we needed them to. Now, we were getting the ball back and I noticed that he was bringing down his user a bit too much. I'm bombing him. I'm bombing him. I have to go for it. Come on, Lean Houghton. Hold on to it. Let's go. Since he would just block the extra point, I decided to go for two and I was starting to feel a lot better about this game, especially after Logan Bonner came away with a massive interception on Drew Aller. It looked like I was about to collapse for a while, but it didn't happen and I somehow got Northern Kentucky into the RFL National Championship which to my surprise wasn't going to be against the reigning champion. Four-seeded Ole Miss pulled off the upset over Kentucky so I felt decent about my chances going into this one and I couldn't believe we forced a fumble on the opening play. There's no way we just got that lucky and we did but unfortunately I wouldn't capitalize on it. Third and goal I'm gonna have to go with the play action again. Nothing got open the last time and I'm gonna throw this one. It's gonna get intercepted. There's no way that that just got picked off. He's going to be able to take this all the way back to the house. I just made a huge mistake. We got bailed out from the start, and I just, I'm just so bad at this game. I'm not sure why, but the pressure of the championship was already getting to me, and you can tell as I was playing scared for no reason. My offensive line just wasn't good enough for quarterback sneaks, and after failing to convert on fourth and inches, I felt like the game was ending before it even had a real chance to start. I was in my own head, and that's not where you want to be when you need to perform your best, but I was anyway and if I don't score on this drive, it's probably over. Fortunately, even though his defense was insanely good, Lee and Houghton Jr. was able to create just a bit of separation, and if anybody was going to keep us in it, it was going to be him. This time, the quarterback sneaked worked, but on the defensive side of the ball, I was just struggling to stop his offense as he took this one to the house completely untouched. I was frustrated, but I knew that we could beat him deep, so when Lee and Houghton Jr. had five yards of separation, I threw it up, but the pass simply didn't go far enough, leading to get another turn over and what felt like the end of our season already. At this point, it seemed like it was already over, so I wasn't playing with any pressure on me anymore, and that was great. That meant I was no longer in my own head, so on crucial plays like this fourth and three, I was able to step up big time, and to end the first half, I got it back within seven points. I also got the ball to start the third quarter, so I could tie it up on this drive, and honestly, I am just disappointed in myself for that start, but right now, we're down to the 40. Even though I got screwed with an underthrow on a bomb earlier on, I had to go for it again, this time paying off and somehow it was 21 all. Now it wouldn't last as his running back consistently gashed my defense for 10 to 15 yards a pop but even with him destroying me I was just happy to still be in it. In fact I should have tied it up here but Lean Houghton Jr. dropped the easiest catch ever and that put me on a tough third and goal where his safety made one of the craziest tackles I'd ever seen. Because of that it was fourth down and after getting thrown right into the blocker off of the handoff I got bounced to the wrong side leading to this and that was very annoying but at least it it led to the quickest three and out yet. On the punt, he almost got extremely lucky, but we bounced on top of it, and as you can imagine, at this point in the game, I was very silent with the championship being on the line. Now, you'd think that this sack would put us in a great position, but even though it was third and 18, he had no issues getting 16 of it back, and I should have known better than leaving Josiah Robinson on an island out there, but he was doing great up until these two plays. Unfortunately, there was nothing I could do to stop Jackson Dart from taking this one all the way in, and if I was going to win, this had had to be the final drive of the game. I milked the clock all the way down to 12 seconds before scoring, and the championship game was going to overtime. I got the start on defense, and the game should have ended with the Sam Vincent pick, but he dropped it, and I thought I lurked him on the following play, but he got away with it instead. I did my best, but I couldn't stop him, and the entire reason I'm even in this position right now is because of all of the mistakes I made, so I refused to complain. I needed to score back-to-back -back touchdowns, meaning I had to lock in, and I thought I called a halfback dive here, but it was a read option, leaving me confused.
least. That was not the play call that I just called. I called a halfback dive. Anyways, that made it fourth and six, which ended up going terribly as nobody was able to get open. And maybe next season I'll win it all, but this just wasn't my year. If you want to join me in the RFL, there will be a link in the description. And all you need is a PC to play in this online NCAA league.